Have you got any, anyone got any questions before we start? Was yeah, it was with Madeline. That's my question. Who's with Madeline? She's just run off. Madeline? Yeah, look, she says she's got a little helper. All right. Hello. <laughs> it's Poppy. Hello, Poppy. <laughs> Very nice. She can be our youngest college member this week. Yeah. yeah. She's just yeah. got a new brother, so she's left home. Oh, all right. That's nice. What's your brother's name then? Uh, it's Todd Oliver Wood. Todd? Todd Oliver Wood. That's his whole name. All right. Very nice. Yeah. Good, good. That'd be nice for you then. Yes. Yeah, lovely. And off you go, Granddad. Is there anyone left waiting to come in? Are we all here? Amanda, are we all here? All right. Oh, you're coming tomorrow, are you, Rachel? Good, good. All right. Good to see you. That'd be good. Right, look, looks like it's, it's like a, a very personal group today. So we're going to get into this today. But you probably saw from the topic, and it is my favourite topic, is feeling into, well, unconditional self-love but also into a theme of gratitude. And it's easy, isn't it, to look around us and um, think about all the, all the things that aren't right in our lives. But every now and again, we have to kind of take a step back and think about the things that we have got. Um, in fact, we're all here together. That's, that's enough reason to be grateful. So we're going to be looking into gratitude and love, which are my favourite things. And I'm going to add into that. And I know, I think Chris had this experience before. I, th I think these things go together is the feeling of gratitude, laughter, and love. And I want you all to have an experience of that in the next hour or so. And whatever you're feeling, whatever's going on in your life, I'd like you to treat yourself to the experience. Okay, because I think, well, I don't think, I know because I've been working this for a long time and that's how I work, that if we can create an emotion then we, we're open to suggestion. I'd like to think it's positive suggestions. So I want you all for a moment, I'm just going to take a minute of minute silence here. But firstly, before I do that, I want you to, because a minute silence for me is very difficult, by the way. <laughs> like That's a minute more, minute silent. I, I never do unless I'm sleeping. But I'm going to take a minute silence. But before we do that, I want you just for a moment to let go of any limitations or limiting beliefs and I want you to think about something that you'd like to achieve this week coming it can it doesn't have to be anything fast it might be winning the lottery which would be really good in which case I'd fully expect you know a cut of it but you know but but how you want to feel or something you'd love to or something you'd love to be free of this week in a way of you know I'd like to stop thinking about that or I'd like to be able to feel like that because when we get into this today, I'm going to ask your unconscious mind to find a way of making that happen for you. So I'd like you to state it in the positive and just think of something. I'm going to go quiet for a minute if I can time that. And then we're just going to go quiet while you just think you can write it down if you want. Something that's going to make you feel good, something that's going to make you feel better um, or something you'd love to achieve this week. Okay, I'm going to go quiet just for a minute.
Okay, surprising how long a minute seems when you're sitting quietly in thought, but that was a minute, and I hope now you've got an idea of something you love to achieve. So the next thing I want you to do, and I, I think this is equally as important, and I'll tell you why in a moment. I want you just for a moment now to take a breath in. As you breathe out, allow your eyes to close and go into that beautiful state of hypnosis. You know how to do this. Just go into that place of peace for a moment and push everything else out of your mind. And then when you've done that, I want you to allow yourself the pleasure of going out into this next week and picturing yourself achieving what you've just thought about, whether it's a feeling, whether it's something you want to do, a way you want to feel, something you want to be free of. I want you to picture yourself doing it. Get a sense of yourself out there achieving that, that feeling, that freedom, whatever it might be. And what I want you to do is I want you to notice the way you move when you're feeling into that. Notice the way you move, notice the way you breathe. Maybe notice the way you're waking up in the morning. And I want you to do this. I want you to step into your future body. Step into it as if you've already achieved it. Feel into that. Get an actual sense of what it feels like to have achieved it. Notice the way you breathe and the way you, the way you, the way you say to yourself and breathe into it. Get a feeling of that now. And ask this question, how much fun is this? How much fun can I make here? How important is it for me? Get a sense of that now, feel into it. Because now you know how good you're going to feel. Everything about your nature, your mind and your body is inclined toward making it happen. I'll count to three, you open your eyes and you're already going to start to feel differently. One, feeling wonderful. Two, to achieve what you want from these next few minutes together. Three, the feeling of freedom from all the limitations that were holding you back before you sat down here today. So I get a sense of that now. You know, some years ago, maybe, well, even, maybe not even years ago, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine. Um, I say a friend. Uh, I've never actually met this lady because she lives in Australia, but we were in communication for quite a long time. And we talk about all kinds of things. She, she's quite way out in the way she thinks, but very, very astute. And um, we were talking about, you know, the, the law of attraction and manifesting and all those things that we read about. And she said, what is missing from all those books on law of attraction and manifesting is what we just did there, which is feeling into the outcome. It's okay, you know, thinking I, I want X amount of pounds in my bank account and picturing it or thinking like this, you know, I want my body to be a certain way and picturing yourself doing it. Whatever your outcome is that you're asking the universe to bring to you, whatever that outcome is, it's okay picturing it and asking the universe to create that for you. But she said what's missing, and I, I absolutely believe this to be true. She said what is missing is actually feeling into the outcome. Because as human beings, we are geared toward pleasure. We want to feel good. We want to be happy. We want to feel joy. We want to be free of pain. We want to feel good. And so... We're geared toward that feeling. If we can feel into the outcome of what, we're, what we want, and we can actually get a sense of what it feels like, and then push that to the back of our mind, then everything about you is geared toward making it happen. You don't need someone to motivate you every day, because in the back of your mind, you know how good you're going to feel when you've created the body you want or created the health you want or created the finances you want. And you just find yourself moving toward it. But we have to keep reminding ourselves. We have to keep feeling into that outcome. Take the time out every day. I was just talking to some people earlier and we were going through the things that I've created and developed in a way of hypnosis and the things that I've done over the last few years. And one of those things, if you haven't already 
seen this is the thing I call the thanks protocol. And I'll tell you how this came about. It was a bit of a strange way of it coming about. But um, some years ago, I had a dream. I had a dream. Well, I had a dream. And I had a dream about Tom Hanks, which is a very strange thing to say. I was dreaming about Tom Hanks. But anyway, in this dream, I was hypnotizing Tom Hanks with this hypnotic induction I don't believe has been used anywhere else. So being the person I was, I went straight on Facebook and said, I had a dream last night about Tom Hanks. If you're interested in learning this induction, put Tom Hanks in the comments. Well, about 400 people replied, Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks. But one person was slightly lazy and they just put capital T, Hanks, right? Which spells thanks. So you know, I thought that's just a perfect thing for this, this protocol. So just before that, I think it was 2019 maybe, um, my son and I had been running some training in India, in Hyderabad and Kerala. And uh, when we go, to, when we, we used to travel all over the world, and my son Anthony and myself, we had this little competition when we're traveling to see who can learn as much of the language as we can before we actually get to the country. And uh, he didn't tell me we were going to India. So he had a sneaky head start and he started learning Hindi before he even told me that we were going to India. So by the time I found out, he already get that head start. So I, I spoke to a friend and I told him about this and he said, well, you don't need to speak Hindi. He said, because in India, most of the people there speak better English than I do. He said, which, which is kind of true, really. But so he said, what you do need to know is the, is the greeting, which is namaste. So I said, what does it mean? He said, what it means is I recognize the God within you, which I think is a beautiful greeting. But I'm not a religious person. Some of you have been in my groups for a while now know that. I'm not a very religious person. So I thought if you just change one letter in that, greeting it becomes I recognize the good within you so when we got to India and we were running the practice with our students I said I want all of you to do this and I explained this little story to them how it came about but I said I want you all to do this before you start to do your practice take a couple of seconds I'm not talking about a minute staring at your partner but a couple of seconds to look your partner in the eye and recognize the good within them because we all have it, if you look deep enough, you have to look pretty hard with me, but you have to look, you can recognise the good within that person. So, this is absolutely true. Some of those people in that room, some of those students were crying. Because how often does someone take the time out to just look at you long enough to recognise the good within you? So, I had this in my mind, I recognised the good within you. And when I train my students, and some of you have been my students or are my students, what I say is when we're working with our, with our clients, and I think we should all do it, I think when we're, when we're really busy, and I'm talking about the NHS and doctors and nurses in particular, are really busy, and we get caught up in the job, if you like. And I, I don't believe anyone goes into being a, a, you know, a medical doctor or a nurse um, purely for the money. I just don't believe it. I think most of them are drawn because they're intrinsically, they want to help other people. But sometimes you can get caught up in the business of it and the, you know, the politics and all the stuff and the paperwork. So when I train my students, I say, look, before you start, run this loop in your mind and keep this thought in your heart. I care about you and I want you to be well. We should be thinking it anyway, but just run it because sometimes we can get separated from why, why we're doing this work. So just run that loop before you even start the work. I care about you and I want you to be well. So these two things, the, um, I recognise the good within you and I care about you and want you to be well. So I put it together in a protocol. I'd like all of you just to try it for a week if you haven't already done this. But before you get going in the morning, or even if you, you know, some time during the day, I want you to take two minutes out just for you, 
two minutes, I'm not talking about two hours out for you, two minutes to sit quietly, breathe like in and out for six seconds, just do that kind of box breathing, and then repeat these words to yourself. When you're working with your client or your patient, I'd hope you could run this and, and aim this at your patients. But I, when we do, well, I want you to, I want you to take the time out to do this for yourself. So when we do this, is you breathe out. So you breathe in for six. Hold it for a moment. As you breathe out, you just say these words to yourself. I recognise the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. I'd like you all to do this with me now, actually. Just close your eyes and just take that breath in. Kind of do it, for, well, you'll count together, but do it for six seconds. Take that breath in now. As you breathe out, listen to my voice. I recognize the good within you. Breathe in again. As you breathe out, thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. Just keep doing that for yourself. For a couple of beats now. Just keep going for a while. And say, repeating those words to yourself. At the same time, it's picturing yourself creating that life that you want. I recognise the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. Just keep going. Aim at yourself. Feel that feeling washing through you. That's right. And when you're ready, just open your eyes. I want you to notice just in those few moments how your central nervous system slows down, how your mind quietens for a while. I want you to do this for yourself. And if you're working with a client, if you feel it's legitimate to say it, say it. I care about you. I want you to be well. You know, over the years, I've seen... I've helped over 25,000 people quit smoking. That's in rooms, one-to-one, face-to-face, -to -face. not over, not online, but face-to-face -face in the same room as those people. And people ask about my, uh, my success rate, and I've never really quantified it. But I know it's very high. I do know it's very high. I'm not going to put a figure on it percentage like most people do. I'm not going to say it. But I know it's a high percentage, but every now and again, someone will phone me up and they say, I came to see you to quit smoking. And I've started smoking again. And they apologize to me. They apologize to me. Why would they do that? You know, they paid me money to help them do something. And they've started smoking again. Why would they phone me up and say, Freddie, I'm sorry, I've started smoking again? Unless they absolutely knew when they were with me that everything about me wanted them to be free. That I can't think of any other reason why they phone me up and apologize to me. Because when they're with me, I want them to be free. I want them to be well. In the same as everyone that's here today, 
I want you to feel better when we leave it today. I want you to get something from today. Maybe one thing that you think I can use that for myself or I can use that for my patients or I can use that for my clients. One thing that can maybe change something in your life and change one other person's life. I know most of you here are carers. You know, you, you're working in the, care, in the care field of helping people overcome stuff in their life or healing. And I know a lot of you have seen maybe hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of people. Today, we're going to be looking at gratitude, but just being able to, what brought you to this point in your life? What, what led you to learning the ability to help one other human being out of pain? And to be grateful for the fact that we've been put on the same path here. So often, as I say, I, you know, I can do it. You know, I, I can beat myself up and I do. But every now and again, I have to remind myself that somewhere, somewhere, someone is out of pain or without their fear because of something I said or an idea I had. And that's not an excuse for me to behave badly, but I'm saying we every now and again, we have to Look at the things that we can, we have done. And all of you here have helped someone in your life and all you're already helping people. So I want you to spend the time this week and I'd like to make it a practice of yours just to take two minutes out every day to run this little thanks protocol. Aim it at yourself and see what happens. So the other thing we're going to be talking about, and I know some of you probably switch your camera off and disappear now because I've spoken about it so often because it's my, you know, it, it's my mantra is unconditional self-love. I think it's the bottom line, especially in our therapy, when we're working with our clients. I want all my clients, I don't care what they come in for, whether it's drugs, whether it's weight loss, whether it's fear and anxiety, whether it's achieving their goals in their life, I want every client of mine to go out understanding their worth as a person. And again, this, this is, again, I, I, I say I have some, I, I've known some incredible people. Um, and again, this came from, from Gailey and I was talking about earlier. My son and I were running some training and uh, when we train people, let's say we're, we're working on how to help people overcome a habit, we asked for one of our students to be a demo subject. So my son Anthony was running this thing on habits and a girl put her hand up and he said, how can I help you? She said, I want to, I want to stop swearing so much. So he ran the, the protocol with her and when he brought her out of hypnosis, I said, why didn't you ask if she wanted to stop swearing completely? He said, that's ridiculous. Who wants to stop swearing completely? It's part of our language. So I said, well, I don't think we need to swear. In fact, I'm going to stop swearing. She was a big statement, really. I swear a lot. So <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm going to stop swearing. And because I'd said it, I was very aware of when I was swearing. And what I realized was that all of the swearing I was doing was at me. You stupid with this, you effing that, you blah, blah, blah. All of my swearing was aimed at me. So I thought it was quite funny. And I spoke to my friend Galen about it. And I said, you know, I said it jokingly. She was not joking. She said that's self-abuse. I hadn't looked at it like that before. Because you wouldn't speak to your child like you speak to yourself you wouldn't expect of your child what you expect of yourself and yet we aim those words at ourselves and she said that's self-abuse and she said what you need to have is an unconditional self-love you know and in england we're told from kids aren't we you know um don't blow your own trumpet you know, no one wants to, no one likes to show off. You know, keep your, keep your thoughts to yourself. But, and we, 
we kind of use it as a derogatory term, don't we, in England? Oh, look at him. He loves himself. Look at her. She loves herself. When what we should be saying is how incredible he loves himself. How wonderful she loves herself. So Galen helped me get to that point of unconditional self-love. And that's not, I love myself. It's not an arrogance. It's loving yourself in the same way as you love your child. Or you, you know, wanting the best for yourself like you want for your client. And the moment I felt into that feeling and allowed myself to feel it, because we have to do to allow ourselves a feeling of unconditional self-love, the first thing that happens is you stop beating yourself up so much. You forgive yourself more for, our, for, for your, you know, my limitations. I forgive myself. I accept myself as a man with all the flaws that that comes with, which is major if you, for those of us who are men, they, we will tell you. I accept myself. I, I do my best to be as kind as I can be to as many people as possible. I understand I make mistakes and I have my own flaws. I accept myself. That's the first thing that happens. You stop beating yourself up so much. And the second thing that happens is you start to eat differently. Well, I did anyway. You start to eat differently. Why would you feed rubbish to someone you love? Why would you overfeed someone you love? You wouldn't do that to your dog. Why would you overfeed yourself if you have a, if you care about yourself? Why would you not look after your body if you have an unconditional self-love? Why would you not treat yourself to the thing you've always wanted to learn? That you've been putting off forever because why bother? I'm 71 in June. And five weeks ago, I started playing the piano. I so wished I'd started playing when I was seven. I love it. I absolutely love it. I can't walk through that room without sitting down and playing something now. I'm obsessed. I'm never going to be on Britain's Got Talent, but I'm determined to learn a few good songs on it. I put that off for years. Never even sat at the piano. What, what do you want to learn? What is it you think, oh, I'd love to be able to do that, that you haven't done? Once you have a feeling of unconditional self-love, you'll find the time to treat yourself to that joy of learning something new. You'll find the time to cook yourself some decent food. You'll stop beating yourself up over the smallest of things. I'm going to get you there today. You're going to feel into that today. And you're going to start to look after yourself better. Take care of yourself better. Be kinder to yourself. Thanks, Protocol. Thank you. I recognise the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. Then you're going to feed into that feeling of unconditional self-love. And your life will change if you're not already feeling it. Your life will change when you do. As I said, I'm lucky enough to know some incredible people. And you also heard me say this, when it comes to our lives and what we want to achieve, what we want to, how we want to feel, there are maybe five questions that we need to ask. Five questions. If you ask these five questions and you answer them, you can change your life. And I mean that seriously. You can change your life. You can change your physical structure, you can change your emotional feelings, and you can change everything about you. If you ask these five questions, answer them 
answer them honestly. Some of you have heard me say this before. I know Chris has been around a long time. You know, I, and you know, I see Chris when he joins my groups, and I'm telling you this. And I know he's sitting here, but I'm going to say it. It makes me smile. I'm so pleased that Chris enjoys these groups. I love the fact that if he has the time, he shows up. Same for Charles, you know, and same for a lot of you. These are the five questions. And if you've got kids or you've got or you're coaching or you've got anybody that's trying to achieve what they want to achieve, I'd ask you to ask these five questions and get your client or your, your child to ask these questions. Here they come. You know, Madeleine's got, she's got Poppy there. Now she's got another little boy in her life. You know, when she comes to you and says, I can't do this or I want to achieve this, ask these five questions. The first one's this. It's the best question on the planet. What has to happen for you to love yourself enough to treat yourself to the health and the life and the love that you want? What has to happen for you to love yourself enough? That's the first question. Second question. If you are not living that life now, if not, why not? Ask the question, because you will have an answer. You will know why you are not living your authentic life that you want. You will know it. First question, what has to happen for you to love yourself enough? Second question, if you're not living that life now, if not, why not? So those are Sandra Grace's questions, which I think are super important. Then there are my three questions, which I ask of myself and I ask of my clients. And it's this. What do you want? What do you actually want? You need to know that. You need to know and be honest with yourself. What do you want? In your quiet times, all the world around you, everything else, what do you want? What's going to feed your soul? What is it that you want? So that's the third question. What do you want? The, sec the fourth question. What do you need to do? to make that happen what do you need to do ask the question you will have an answer you already know what you need to do and those four questions are great but those four questions alone are not going to get you to achieve what you want Unless you do the fifth thing, the last question, which is where most people fall down and get back on their set, eat a bag of crisps, watch some more TV. The last question is this. What am I willing to do to make it happen? What am I willing to do to make that happen? Dreaming about stuff. Manifesting. Asking the cosmos to give it to us. Seriously. It's there to be had. But you have to move. Do you remember that, that joke about the, uh, the guys out on the sea? A very religious guy. And his, uh, his boat capsizes. And a safety boat goes past. They said, look, you know, do you want to set up? You know, um, God will save me. So the boat goes off. They send a rescue helicopter. Helicopter over, over those. They said, no, God will save me. The helicopter goes. A ship goes past. Do you want to help? You know, God will save me. And the guy drowns. He gets to the pearly gates. 
And he says, God, why did you let me down? He said, well, I sent you a helicopter and a rescue boat and a ship. What more do you want? We have to take the chance. We have to do it. We have to take the opportunity. It's there for us. I don't care what you say. You know, I, I know, I know what you can create physically. I know. I'm doing it. I'm doing it myself. I don't go to the gym. I haven't got a gym membership. But in these 70 years, I've learned enough to know what I should eat. I've learned enough to know how I should move if I want to create the body I want. But I have to do it. I have to do it. I said to my wife once, I said, you're making me fat. She just laughed. So, well, you moan if I didn't put nice stuff in the fridge. You'd moan if I didn't bake you nice things. She's absolutely right. I have to do it. We have to do it. You have to, at some point, say, I'm taking responsibility for whatever it is you want to achieve and let go of any limitations. All of you here are super intelligent. That's why you're here. You're in that minor, minute percentage of people who actually do something to change their life. That are willing to take an hour out on Friday to come and sit and listen. While everyone else is sitting in front of the TV, wishing they had the body they want, wishing they had the life they want, earn the money they want, while they're watching daytime TV. That's not going to happen. You're in that minute percentage of people who actually make a difference. So I know I'm preaching to the choir, as they say, but I know that you have people that come to you for help. We have to take action. I have one of the things I have helped people with is weight loss. And the excuses that I've heard over the years for people not creating the body they want. I would lose weight if only my husband didn't eat so many potatoes. I would lose weight if my boyfriend didn't keep buying me chocolates. I would lose weight if I had more time to go to the gym. I would lose weight if only. The amount of excuses I've heard. All the women in my, my, my family are big boned. That's one of my favourites. I so we don't see these documentaries starving kids in Africa and India. And there's one fat kid at the back and they say, well, that's a big bone guy. It's ridiculous, yet we make these excuses up. When I, when my clients say, and I listen, if only this, funny that, funny this, I say that, I, I say this, if that if only is outside of your own head, then all you are is a victim of circumstance. That's all you are. The moment you say, I am taking responsibility for me, my life, my finances, my health and fitness, then you can change it. The moment you say I'm taking responsibility. We're going to feel into this today, and you will, because I want you to be well, and I want you to be happy, and I want you to be everything you want. I want you, Madeline, to want for yourself what you want for Poppy. Now, when I see people and they're, they're doing drugs or they're killing themselves from alcohol or food and they tell me they've got young kids or they've got grandchildren, I just say this. Would you want your child eating, overeating like that? Would you want your child four or five stone overweight? Would you want your child smoking cigarettes? Would you want your child doing cocaine? I would have one of those people say, yeah, I wouldn't mind my kid doing that. Not one of them. I said, I'm going to help you overcome that need. And when you leave here, the need for that will be gone. And then you'll have two choices. But you are going to make that choice when you step out of this door, not me. And because the choice comes from you and not me, it lasts forever. They can take the credit. So you don't have to say you want to see this strange bald guy and hypnotise me. I can't do it anymore. No. I want them to take responsibility. Then it lasts forever. They can take the credit. They can take the, 
take the pleasure out of saying, I've overcome this. But we just have to say, what do I want? How bad is what I want that? What am I willing to do to make this happen? And then we can change it. So we're going to get into that today. And I want this for you. I truly want it for you. You know, that before we had met, if something had happened to Rachel, I read that in the paper. I was, well, that's sad. But it would have no effect on me because I don't know Rachel. But now Rachel's in my life. Now Chris is in my life. Now you're in my life, Bazina. Now you're in my life, Hannah, and two, and Martina. I cannot not be affected by what happens to any of you. I can't. So it's important to me. So I do get passionate about this, yes. I'm not here just talking for the sake of talking because it's what I do. Because you matter to me. I care about you. I want you to be well. I want you to leave here today with a true understanding of your worth and your value. I want you to know that you are love. You know, when you're three months old or two months old, four weeks old, like little, you know, little Todd. All Todd wants at this point in time. All he is, is pure love and light and joy. That's what that little boy is. How old is he, Madeline? Turn your mic on for a second. He's um, five days old. Five days old. Todd is pure light and pure joy and pure love. And all he wants is to be loved and fed and looked after. That's all that little boy wants. And that is how the core of your being is exactly that. Before the world got to you. But the core of your being, the essence of who you are, is still exactly the same. You are Todd. You are joy and love and light. That's who you are. I want you to feel into that today. And know that that is who you are. Then we can live in this world and we can pass through this world and all the stuff that happens to us, financial crisis, the pandemics, the crazy people in the world. We can move through this world, but hold on to who we truly are, the essence of who we are. That's where we're going to go today. And you get feeling to that theme of gratitude, laughter, and love. I don't know if there are any other animals on this planet that have a sense of humour. Maybe some of you will enlighten me. I don't know whether no, you, I know we have animals that seem to laugh at stuff, but I I don't know. I, th I think it's what separates us out: sense of humour, the ability to laugh for no reason. So let's get into this today. I know I've rabbited on again today, but I want you to feel into this with me. And know that while we're together today, and I mean this from my heart, while we're together today, you are all that matters to me. It's important to me that you allow yourself to get into this. Think about where you want to be and understand that you are worth doing that for. Whatever that goal might be. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is this, get, get comfortable when you can, make sure you're safe. That's right. And when you're ready to do this, take a deep breath in, hold it for a moment. And as you breathe out, just allow yourself to go into that beautiful space. Just for a while, nobody wants anything and no one expects anything. There is nothing for you to do but to listen to my voice. 
for a moment, focus on those tiny muscles around your eyes and allow your eyes to relax completely. Get a sense of that happening automatically. Every word I say relaxes your eyes more and more. Get a sense of that happening automatically. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. Think about the people you love. Get a sense of that feeling of light and love and joy that you truly are the core of your being. That's why you're here in this group. It's what separates you out from those who don't feel that. And feel into it now. And believe what I believe about you and feel into that feeling. And as you do that, your eyes have relaxed so completely, they just won't work for a while. And when you realise your eyes are so relaxed, they just won't work for a while. You can test them, find it completely locked just for a while. Now, nothing bothers or affects you, nothing disturbs you. In a moment, I'm going to say the word love. And as you hear that word, that feeling of relaxation around your eyes, it's going to flood down through your body like a bliss anesthesia. Every muscle, nerve and fibre relaxing, your body relaxing, your mind relaxing. But no matter how relaxed your body becomes, that chair will support you. So get ready. As you hear that word, that feeling of relaxation around your eyes, it's going to flood down through your mind and your body. Just wash down through you. Hear that word. Love. And feel yourself just sinking into that space. Less and less aware of yourself as a physical being, but totally aware of yourself as a mind. Just drifting deeper, deeper, deeper down. Nobody wants anything, no one expects anything. Nothing bothers or affects you, nothing disturbs you. And with the eyes closed, you can continue to relax now. Although at times you may be more aware of some things than you were before. The sound of my voice. The comfort of the chair. The sounds in the room. The sounds outside the room. Certain sensations. The beating of your heart. And the thoughts and images that drift into the mind automatically. Once again, see the face of the people you love, people that love you. Feel that love now. Let her remind you of just how incredible you are and how loved you are. Because you are love. And you are loved. And you are loving. And as you become aware of that feeling, as you go deeper and deeper into that feeling now. Because with the eyes closed, it becomes easier. To become more and more aware of a variety of things, otherwise may go overlooked or ignored. Thoughts. Feelings. Sensations. The alteration of awareness as the mind continues that letting go. That's right. Letting go even of the effort it takes to be aware of exactly where the arms are positioned or the hands or fingers. Even the effort it takes to be aware of which leg seems to relax more quickly or completely than the other may seem to be too much effort to bother making. as you continue to learn even more than before about your abilities, your capacities to learn as you relax. And the mind begins to drift down toward a place of quietness. A 
place of peaceful inner awareness. A place that almost seems to give off signals that directs awareness down toward it, into it. More and more comfortably, more and more effortlessly, more and more completely and deeply than before. Or even the effort it takes to be aware of the sound of my voice or the meaning of my words may almost seem to be too much effort to bother making. It's so much easier simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. Allowing events to occur in your own time, in your own way, a drifting down. Deeper, deeper, deeper down. Get a sense of that happening automatically. Just drifting down through space and time. Drifting down toward a place of total bliss. Nobody wants anything. No one expects anything. And as you drift in that space, my voice, my words drift with you to become a part of your experience now. The deeper you go, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you'll go. 10, 20, 100 times deeper. Just when you think you've reached that ultimate space of bliss and profound hypnosis, my voice, my words are going to take you 10 times deeper. Get a sense of that happening automatically. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. Every word I say doubles that feeling now. Everything I say now is your reality. Every suggestion I give you, your mind and body will act upon. Without hesitation, is now your reality. You have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. And that unconscious mind, the back of the mind, that instinctive, intuitive, incredible part of your being, can continue to hear, to understand and respond to those things I might say without the need for you to do anything at all. It's so much easier for the conscious mind simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. That's right. Letting go even of the effort it takes to make the effort that it might take. To tell the exact position of arms, legs, or the entire body now that seems to drift through time and space. That wonderful free floating place of effortless relaxation and letting go. Allowing events to occur in their own time, in their own ways, you drift as a mind. And that mind drifts without boundaries, without borders, without limits. Allow yourself the pleasure of going out there into the future once again. See yourself out there creating the life you want, the health you want, and doing it fearlessly. Notice the way you move and the way you breathe. Once again, step into that body, feel into it, get a sense of it now, and ask the question, how much fun is this? How much fun can I make it? How important is it for me? Because now you know where you're going. Now you know how good you're going to feel when you get there. It's not a force on this planet that's going to keep you from achieving that goal. You will ask that question, what has to happen for you to love yourself enough? To treat yourself to that feeling. How badly do you want to feel that good? And what are you willing to do to make it happen? And as you feel into that now, you know what you want. Everything about your nature now is inclined toward making it happen. Because in a moment, you're going to have the most incredible feeling and experience of liberation. In a moment, the essence of who you are, that incredible part of your being, the passenger, the observer, it's going to drift up out the top of your head and leave your body in that chair for a while. 
It'll be the most incredible thing of liberation. Get a sense of that happening now, just drifting up out of your body, leaving your body in that chair for a while. Get a sense of that now, drifting higher and higher. And as you drift away from your body and you experience that feeling of freedom and liberation, free of all earthly ties, I want you to look back at that body in that chair and just for a moment, show it some appreciation. How incredible are you? Because your body is the most incredible creation in this known universe. You are unique. There has never been another you. Now, never will be. You are unique in the history of mankind. How incredible are you? And as you look at your body, as you drift away from it, make a decision to look after that body, to treat it with kindness and love. Treat it with the love that you treat the people around you. Want for yourself what you want for the people around you. Make a decision now. And just for a moment, I'm going to say those words, and I want you to aim those words at yourself. As you look at that body from just way off, I recognize the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. Aim those words at that body in that chair. I recognize the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. I want you to be well. And as you drift further and further away, get a sense of drifting up out of that building you're in. Drifting up into the sky, drifting higher and higher. Just drifting up like a helium balloon. Some young girl has let go of in the park. Get a sense now of drifting so high that you can actually look back at this beautiful planet we're living on. The whites of the clouds and the mountaintops, the greens of the forest, the blues of the ocean. See that beautiful blue planet spinning through space and time. How incredible is this planet we live on? And just for a moment, think about the eight billion people that live on that planet of which you are one one unique incredible individual think about those eight billion people and i want you to notice as you think about that now how your perspective changes things that had seemed overwhelming no longer have any power over you at all things that had seemed hard or difficult to overcome no longer have any power over you now in your mind's eye, get a sense of the target, like an artery target. A massive target between you and that planet. Get a sense of the colours in the very centre, like a portal. That's right, like a spinning vortex in the centre of that target. Because in a moment I'm going to make this sound. As I make that sound going to be fired shot like an arrow straight through the center of that target now in the center of the target in that spinning vortex of light is the most incredible feeling of unconditional self-love and i want you to know it's okay to feel that good in the center of that spinning vortex is the most incredible thing of unconditional self-love and as i make that sound you're going to be fired shot straight through the center and your mind and body will be flooded with that incredible feeling. And I want you to enjoy every moment. Get ready. As you hear that sound, get ready to have that experience as your body and mind's flooded with that feeling. Now you're in that space. Feel that feeling of unconditional self-love flooding through your body like a golden light, the golden fluid seeping into every cell, into the very atoms of your being. Feel it in the very marrow of your bones, lighting you up. You are loved, you are loved, you are loving. Feel into it now. And as you feel that feeling flooding through your body, notice that every irrational thought or doubt that was ever placed on you is gone because it cannot coexist in your body and mind with that feeling of unconditional self-love 
And as you feel into that, as you recognize that you are worth loving, in the same way as that beautiful little baby, because that's who you are at the core of your being. You are pure joy. You are pure love. You are pure light. Feel into that and know that's who you are. And make a decision. Treat yourself to the kindness that you want to feel for other people. Do for yourself and want for yourself that what you want for the people you love. Make that decision now. And that feeling of unconditional self-love is going to stay with you. It's going to grow stronger day by day. And you're going to take it into everything you do. And your life will change. From today, you will look after yourself because you're worth it. You will take care of yourself because you are worth it. We will show yourself the kindness that you show others because you are worth it. And know it's okay to feel that good. And so as you drift in that space, I want you to think of a moment of pure gratitude for someone, something, but a moment in your life when you felt that feeling of gratitude for something. And I want you in your mind's eye to reach up and grasp that feeling and pull it into your heart center. And feel your heart expanding with that feeling of gratitude. Feel your heart expanding with that feeling of gratitude. Now think of a moment of pure laughter. When you just laughed and laughed, that wonderful belly laugh that we can laugh, that unconscious, unlimited feeling of laughter, that feeling of total joy. How good is it to be alive, to be able to laugh like that? Think of that moment, feel into it, get a sense of it. Once again, grasp it and pull it into your heart center. And feel your heart expanding now with that feeling of gratitude and laughter and joy. Feel your heart expanding. Now think of a moment of pure, unconditional love for someone. Or a moment when you knew that someone felt that unconditional love for you. Like that baby, that beautiful little Todd, who only knows love. Only experiences unconditional love. Think of a moment like that in your life. Feel into it. Grasp it. And pull it into your heart center. And feel your heart expanding now with that feeling of gratitude and laughter and unconditional love. Know it's okay to feel that good. And notice as your heart is flooded with those feelings. That every irrational fear and doubt is gone from your mind and body. Because it cannot coexist in your body and mind with that feeling of love. You are love, you are loved, and you are loving. And this feeling is going to stay with you. It's going to grow stronger day by day. So I'd like to give you that time now. It's your privilege. Use this experience. Think about the things you can do. Strengths, abilities, skills, the love that you may have overlooked before. That will allow you a clear view of the possibilities of a new way of living, a new way of being. Take that time now, a brief time that seems to be a long time. Review. Plan at some level of awareness of things you're going to do later on. Now you feel into that thing of love. Things you're going to change later on. Now you have that feeling of unconditional self-love. As you begin to use more and more of you, take that time now. And go over with your unconscious soul as you need to, to know that you're free. Free of the past, free of the future, free to live in this moment and to enjoy this moment. Only when the unconscious mind knows has made those changes and allows the conscious mind to accept the changes made 
because in a moment I'm going to count to 10 and every suggestion I've given you, your mind and body will act upon. Imagine it's happened and there's nothing you can do about that. On eight, your eyes will open. You will feel incredible because you are incredible. And on 10, that feeling of unconditional self-love, gratitude, laughter, joy, it's going to stay with you. It's going to grow stronger day by day as you work towards creating the life that you want by continuing to help others create the life they want. How incredible are you? So get ready as I count to 10. On eight, your eyes will open. You'll feel like you've had a weight lifted, like you've had the blinkers removed. You'll see things differently, experience life differently. And on 10, that wonderful feel of empowerment and freedom and love is going to grow stronger day by day. One, feeling absolutely wonderful. Now two, to create the life you want by helping others create the life they want. Three, the thing of freedom from every limiting belief that was ever placed on you. Four, feel a force of that love, gratitude and laughter flooding your body and mind. Five, feeling incredibly alive now. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feeling absolutely wonderful. Nine, ten. Excellent. Thanks for spending this time with me today and having this time for the time together. Know that I want this for you. Know that I want you to be happy and I want you to be well. Just treat yourself with that kindness and know it's you're worth doing it for. And uh, just want for yourself, Madeleine, what you want for Poppy. That's all you have to do to stay healthy and well. So are they your grandchildren? Do I, can I ask? Yes, well, they're my step-grandchildren. Um, between us, we have 11. Do you? Wow. Well, I've got five. And my oldest granddaughter is 29. She said to me, get prepared for next year. She'll have a party when she's 30. I can't believe it. You know, I have a grandchild of 30. My youngest is 20. So, yeah, not even grandchildren anymore, are they? They're grand adults. Yeah. You know, but it's a, it's a joy. And we just got to stay well enough, long enough. That's what we've got to try and do. That's my goal anyway, to annoy them for as long as. That's my goal. Look, it's been great seeing you. Have a beautiful weekend and um, share the love. All right. Take care.